Hey, welcome to 2019, ladies, gentlemen. Um, I'm sure the time has come. You're making that New Year's resolution. You want to get sober. You want to quit drinking. You drink every day. You drink once every couple days, maybe once a week. Um, if you're like me, I drink every single day, probably between 8 to 10, maybe sometimes 12 beers a day. Um, you know, and most of the time I, I had the rules of drinking, you know, I'm, I'm never going to drink at work. I'm never going to drink in the morning. I, you know, I don't drink before five o'clock, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, either way, whether you're drinking, you know, all day, every day after five, once a week, it doesn't matter if, you know, if you get to the point where, you need that alcohol, you need to drink, you need to feel that relief, that buzz, whatever it may be, you know, that warm feeling once it hits your stomach, you know, if, if you're a hard alcohol drinker, um, if you're just a beer drinker, it doesn't matter. If you're at that point in your life where you feel like you can't make it through a day or you can't have fun without alcohol or you need that liquid courage to do something, you know, it's, it's a problem. And if you're watching this video, you've probably accepted that, that it's a problem and you want to rid yourself of that problem for good, once and for all, right? Like me, I, I did that for years. I, I, I sat and told myself I'm not an alcoholic because of all those rules, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't convince myself that I was actually an alcoholic and that I had a problem. Until, I mean, it took several people and several years of people telling me that, you know, you have a problem. You, you drink too much. You drink too often. You know, all those things. I didn't want to admit it, but it finally hit me. Took a couple of different trips to the hospital. Um, it took, you know, my wife leaving me once and then, you know, we're back together now. Thank God. But it, it took so many things that it just didn't need to take for me to finally get sober. Um, I'm still fairly new to sobriety. I'm just under six months on the 11th of January. It'll be six months for me. So, I mean, that's huge. Um, and that's the longest I've been sober since high school. And I graduated high school in 1999. So kind of date myself there a little bit. But, um, yeah, that's the longest I've been sober since freaking high school, man. So, I mean... I'm just kind of there to show you that, you know, if one person can do it, you can do it. You know, you have the power. All you got to do is just be willing to commit. Um, and that's really, I mean, that's really all it takes. And for me, I don't like meetings. Uh, there's lots of people that go to meetings and that helps them. And that's great. Like if that's your thing, please stick to it. Go to those meetings as, as many and as often as you like, you know, as many as you need to, to get through that. Um, I myself just have never been a fan of meetings. Um, for me, they wanted, you know, I wanted to drink more after I left those meetings because of hearing some of their stories. And I'm just like, I don't relate to these people at all. I'm not an alcoholic. I can go home and drink now, you know. And it, I mean, it was bullshit it, for me. I was an alcoholic. So going to meetings didn't help me. But if it helps you, if you think it's going to help you, please give it a try. Please give it a try. Give anything a try that you think is going to help you. I'm here to tell you, anything that you think is going to help you, try it. If it doesn't help you, then try something else. Um, but that's all you can do, is just keep trying something until you find the thing that works. Um, there's a lot of things that you're going to go through when you quit drinking. Obviously, the first 24 hours is going to suck um, if you're a heavy daily drinker. Um, if you're like a once a week drinker, then going 24 hours isn't a big deal for you. Um, because you, you know, you might only drink once a week, but, um, still, if you are that once a week drinker and you feel like you have to drink that one day a week to get you through, I mean, you know, that's, and you realize that it's a problem, you're watching this video, you want to rid yourself of that problem, so that first week for you might suck, you know, much like the first 24 hours for us daily drinkers sucks, that first week for you might suck. Um, but you know, one thing that somebody told me and it was a guy I didn't even know, I mean, I won't name his name, but, um, he told me cause I reached out to him. He didn't, like I said, he didn't know me. I didn't know him. I just, I, I was a fan of some work that he does and I reached out to him because of some things that he said. And 
he broke down some pretty harsh realities about myself that he shouldn't have known because he didn't know me, but because, you know, he's known alcoholics and he's known people with problems in the past, he broke down some harsh truths about myself. And it really took hearing that from somebody I didn't even know to realize, you know, that I needed help. I needed to help myself. Um, but one of the most valuable things that he told me was, stop, please go away. Um, that's my kid right there. Um, he might be back in a future video. Never know. Um, anyway, he told me that you were the author of your life story. It's up to you to write it. Nobody else. And that right there, that, that resonated with me huge. Um, because all this time that I was telling myself that I had a problem and, you know, that I wanted help and all this and that, I, I was expecting people to do it for me. I like deep in the back of my mind, I was honestly thinking somehow, some way, somebody else was going to get me sober. Uh, and that's just not the case. I mean, I know, you know, you're watching the video because, you know, you need help, which that's great. I am here to help you, but I'm not going to do it for you. I can't do it for you. You have to do it yourself. I'm just here to hopefully motivate you a little bit. Uh, because that's what I needed. I needed that motivation. Once I realized that nobody was going to do it for me, nobody was going to wave a magic wand and, you know, feed me some magic pills. All of a sudden one day I was going to wake up and not drink anymore. That's not going to happen. It's just not. Um, but sometimes outside motivation is great motivation. Somebody you don't know, like me, I don't know you, you don't know me, but maybe hearing a couple of my stories is going to help you. And that's my goal for posting this video. Um, and I, I'm, you know, I'm going to post some more in the future. Hopefully, you, you know, you guys want to see them, like, and subscribe, and then, you know, I'll keep posting them. Um, and if you want to hear more stories or anything like that, anything more in detail, you want to talk to me personally, you know, I'm on Facebook, Dustin Tamplin. Um, you can instant message me on Facebook, you know, whatever, leave comments here in the video, please, um, do whatever you got to do. But, um, yeah, anyway, I kind of, I digress a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's what it took for me. It was just hearing somebody else tell me what a failure at life I was being basically because of my alcohol use. And, um, that's what it took for me. And I just, I woke up one day and I realized, you know what? I'm done with this shit. I'm done with it forever. I don't need it. And that's what I did. I just, I quit, you know, and I'd, I'd heard all the horror stories of, oh, you can't just quit drinking. If you're a heavy drinker, if you're an alcoholic, you can't just quit drinking. It can kill you, which I'm not a doctor, you know, um, if you're a serious, serious, serious drinker, and I mean, you go through the withdrawals and you get the DTs and the shakes and the high blood pressure and the heart palpitations and things talk to your doctor obviously i'm not here to tell you don't talk to your doctor don't listen to them talk to your freaking doctor believe me um, if you really think you're going to have some health issues talk to your doctor about it that's the smartest thing you can do um, i talked to my doctor about it in the past we developed a plan and everything but the only thing is um, i'm not too comfortable with taking meds so i didn't really want to do all that like as far as the antibuse and stuff like that that's out there um, I didn't really want to do that just because I'm scared of side effects, but, um, that's just me being paranoid. Um, but please, yeah, talk to your doctor, get a plan. If you think that that's something you need to do, um, if you can make it a day and you don't get the crazy sweats and DTs and shakes and start feeling sick to your stomach and stuff, odds are you can probably do it. But again, you know, monitor yourself, talk to your doctor. Um, if you've got a significant other, a partner, you know, anybody, a good, a good friend, anybody, you can tell, Hey, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try and go through it. You know, can you spend a day or so with me? Can you, you know, stick by my side, keep an eye on me, just check me out. If anything seems weird, you know, let somebody know, try stuff like that. Cause you know, you may need that support. Um, because you never know what your body's going to do, especially if you're a serious heavy drinker. Um, like I said, I drank between six and 10 beers a day, sometimes more, sometimes less, but, um, I got the shakes a little bit, but I didn't get any serious side effects or anything. You know, I wasn't puking my brains out. I, you know, I wasn't like stuck in bed for days. I just, I felt a little weird, but I think that was mostly mental just because I, you know, I wanted to drink, but, um, I just kept telling myself I'm not going to drink today. And that's one of the main things I'll tell you. Um, and I don't know if I can mention their name, but everybody knows the main meeting group out there. Everybody knows who they are. But um, that's one of the first things I can tell you is one day at a time. And that is absolutely the truth. 
Um, it's one day at a time. That's all you can do. Just tell yourself, I'm not going to drink today. Find that willpower to get through today. It's going to be worth it. Um, once you make it through that first 24 hours, you know, if you're a daily drinker, that first 24 hours might be huge. For me, it was huge because I'm like, wow, I just made it a whole day without drinking. You know, that was awesome to me. Um, and the next thing I know, it was two days and then it was three days and then it was a week and then it was a month. And, you know, now here I am almost six months later and it seems like yesterday. It's, I mean, it's flown by. Um, and I'm kind of a visual type person. I like visual motivation. So I also, um, I mean, there's a million apps out there. We, we know that, but there's an app out there called sober time. Um, I downloaded it you know, I got it on my, my Android phone. Um, and it counts down by the day. You can set goals in yourself or set goals for yourself by the day, by the week, whatever. Um, it comes standard with a few defaults, but I added a few in there. Um, but that was a huge motivator for me. Once I got to a week, I saw seven days sober and then it breaks down, you know, how many hours sober you are. I mean, to me, that was huge. So that helped me a lot. But again, that's just a suggestion. Um, you can do anything you want as far as, you know, motivation goes. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. Another thing to kind of expect is Dad. sugar. You are going to crave freaking sugar. Mm -hmm. I craved it like crazy. Uh, my first month of not drinking, I ate the shit out of ice cream. Um, I could not get enough ice cream. I don't know what it was about ice cream specifically, but for some reason for me, I killed ice cream. So I probably clogged an artery, but you know. It was, it, it got me through. Um, another thing, you know, find a hobby. Um, if you don't already have any, find something. For me, I'm not a very creative guy. Um, I do like to work with my hands, but I'm just not any damn good at it. Um, my thing is TV, movies, books. Um, reading was good for me, but I found myself kind of getting bored and wanting to put the book down. Even if it was a really good book, I'd find myself wanting to put the book down and find something else to do. Um, so my big thing was TV. I found some great TV shows to watch. Um, video games. If you're a video gamer, try that. Um, if video gaming is a trigger for you to drink, then obviously that's probably not going to be the best route to take. For me, um, I used to drink a lot playing video games, so I couldn't play video games for a long time. I'm not a huge video gamer, like I said, but I do enjoy them once in a while. I play a little bit more now so than I did before, um, only because that's because I, I can play it sober now and enjoy it. So I've gotten a little bit more into it than I used to be. But uh, yeah, I mean, just find something. Replace that bad habit with a healthy habit. Um, you know, you can try changing your diet, things like that. Um, if you're a smoker, I wouldn't recommend quitting smoking and drinking the same day. Um, or even the same like week or same month because that's going to be a major stress factor. I was a smoker um, and I quit drinking and I smoked like a chimney, dude. Um, I actually did just quit smoking about two, you know, almost two months ago. Um, can't say that I replaced it with anything much healthier, but at least I'm saving my lungs. But, you know, I, I switched to dipping. Um, so for me, that was just something to kind of get the cessation, you know, the cessation of nicotine, but without smoking. So, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and pack a lip here real quick. So pardon me, but, uh, yeah. So, um, what else? I don't know, man. I mean, like I said, if you've watched this far in the video, hopefully you're still hooked and still, you know, want to find that way to get sober. Um, because it can be done, man. Um, there's so many different things you can do. Um, you know, find a buddy. Find a good sober buddy. Because that's another thing that you'll probably find out once you quit drinking. Is all these friends and stuff that you hung out with when you were drunk. You know, that was one of the main reasons to get together is so you guys could get drunk. You know, Super Bowls. Um, I'm into NASCAR. So it was like, none of my friends are into NASCAR. But it's like, I'd invite them over for the Daytona 500 so we could just get drunk. You know, they didn't want to watch the race, really. They were into it once it was on, but they didn't really want to watch it much. They just came over so we could drink. Um, so that's one thing you got to keep in mind, too, is if if that's all you have is drinking buddies, you know, that's going to be a little tougher for you. Um, if you have really good friends in your circle, 
there's going to be, you know, there's going to be people that support you and be there with you and still be your friend in the end, no matter what. And then, you know, much like I found out too, you're going to have some that are like, oh, you're not drinking no more. I guess we're not friends, you know, and that's going to happen. Be prepared for that. Um, you'll know who your true friends are. And that's the thing is, you know, if they don't want to hang out with you because you're not drinking no more, then I guess they're not really a, that good of a friend. They never were in the beginning. So, um, like I said, I've, I've found out who some of my real friends are, um, and I value that to this day. Um, mud jug, get yours at mudjug.com. I don't work for them. I'm not getting paid for that. I just love my freaking mud jug. Um, if you're a dipper and you don't have one, get one. Anyway, so yeah, friends, um, keep some good buddies around. You know, if you need somebody to call, like I said, when, when I said a few minutes ago, find that person that's going to help you get through it and tell them if I need to call you, you know, let me call you. If you need someone to talk you down off that ledge, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about picking up that beer bottle or that vodka bottle or whatever bottle you choose, you know, um, get somebody you can call because that's, that's really important. Um, I had one that I called, you know, a guy I've known for a long time. He's been sober like 15 years. Um, he helped me a lot. He goes to those meetings, um, faithfully like twice a week. And, uh, you know, I went to a couple with him and I just told him, I said, you know, bro, these aren't my thing, but I love you. And, you know, I still want to, I want you to be there for me in any way you can. And he still is to this day. So that's huge. Um, what else? Uh, I don't really know. Um, like I said, I just, I know that it's tough. Um, I know that it's, it's really hard, but you can do it. You really can. You can absolutely do it. Um, it's just a matter of willpower and getting through, you know, they, they always say, oh, if you can get through the first three days or if you can get through the first seven days or, you know, however long most folks say that you got to make it through, you know, I didn't really notice any particular set amount of time that it took to get through anything. Um, because it, you know, after the first week I was like, all right, cool. I made it a week, but I still had cravings, you know? But it was just up to me to manage those cravings and not let certain things trigger me and make me want to go to the store and, you know, buy a case of beer. Um, I have kids, too. Um, I have four boys, so ranging from little to teenager. So that helped me a lot, too, because they were, you know, they were a huge motivator for me to want to get sober. Um, so I spent a lot of time with them, you know, um, just doing things that they like to do. Uh, things that I could never do before when I was drunk or I couldn't do without getting drunk. Um, so I'm doing a lot more of those things now, sober and enjoying it 10 times more than I ever did before. Um, you know, you're probably going to hear things like the grass is greener on the other side. Life is going to get so much better. And I'm here to tell you it is, it really is going to get better. I never believed it myself. Um, I, I denied it. I was like, nah, no, I don't have that big of a problem. Life's not going to be that much different. You know, I manage my drinking. I'm, I'm functional, blah, blah, blah. You know, it doesn't matter. Dude, I'm sober now. And I'm telling you, it is so much better. Food tastes better. Sleep is better. Uh, sex is better. Uh, I mean, everything is just so much better. I mean, I can get in my car and drive and not have to worry about, you know, getting busted, even though I, I never really drank and drive anyway, because I got a DUI back in 2005. So I kind of learned my lesson from that. But there still were times that I'd go out and have a couple beers and then, you know, drive home and then get wasted at home. But um, yeah, there, I mean, there's just so many things that you don't have to worry about anymore. You know, once you finally get sober, you've got that, you know, you've got that burden off your shoulders. It's just there's so much more you can focus on when you don't have to think about when you can get drunk, you know, because like I said, that was me, you know, I was the one I never drank in the morning. I never drank at work. You know, I did hold true to those rules. But man, as soon as I got home from work, almost every day I was kissing a beer before I kissed my wife, you know, and that's that's no way to be, you know, um, and I don't have to worry about that anymore. You know, I don't have to worry about how long it takes me to get home from work and, you know. I work at a job where I, uh, I'm a cable technician, so sometimes I'm out late. And that used to suck when I was drinking because, you know, I'd be out till 7, 8 o'clock at night, and I'm like, this is cutting into my drinking time, you know. Um, now I don't have to worry about that because I don't have drinking time anymore. So that doesn't bother me at all anymore. Um, so that's a huge relief. Um, 
yeah um so i mean i don't really know what else to say in this video um because we're hitting like 20 minutes um if you watch this far thank you seriously thank you um like i said i hope this is motivation you can do it you can get through it if you have any questions post it in the comments um like i said hit me up on facebook dustin tamplin uh, you can find me on there friend request me you know private message me whatever um I'll answer any questions that I can, you know, I'll try. Um, that's my goal for this video is just to try and be real. You know, I'm not trying to be a miracle worker. I'm not trying to, you know, make you believe in something that's not real and blah, blah, blah. You know, there. I mean, there's the, these videos are out there. There's all kinds of videos. I don't know how motivational a lot of them are. I watched a few of them. Some of them were great. Some of them I didn't really care for. Um, I'm just hoping to spread a message of reality. This is what reality is like. When you quit drinking, this is what reality is like when you're going through quitting drinking. And this is what reality is like while you are drinking. Because I've been there. I know what it's like while you're drinking. And I know what it's like to want to stop. And now I can say I know what it's like to have stopped. And now I'm moving forward with my sobriety. Um, and I'm thankful every day for it. Um, so religion, you know, I don't know if you have religion. If you do, keep it. If you don't. You know, you could try it, try and find it, but I'm not here to tell you that, you know, God is the answer. Because if he's not for you, then he's not for you, you know. I was never a really super religious person. I did start going to church. I have some family members, you know, that reached out to me and, you know, told me to give it a shot. And I gave it a shot and I loved it. So I, I go to church now. I don't go every Sunday. Um, I try and go as often as I can. But uh, for me, it was uplifting. It was spiritual. It's motivational. Um, it just made me feel happy. It made me feel at peace, which apparently that's how church is supposed to make you feel. So for me, it, it did help. Um, but again, if church isn't your thing, then by all means, don't start going if you don't want to. Um, it's just another option for you. There's tons of options out there. There's so many different things out there than drinking. Um, a lot of things that can help you get through it. Hopefully I am one of them. Um, if I'm not, you know, sorry. But uh, yeah, that's my goal. I'm here to help you. I want to I wanna give you the real facts of how I dealt with it and uh, hopefully help you deal with it as well. So again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you liked it and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And uh, yeah, day one. Start counting. Day one's now. Take care.